Well, hey there. It's your old pal Keith from Groups.com. And um, I've been working on updates to Floppy, which is my plugin for browser storage, data manipulation, and a lot more cool stuff. And in the original version, um, it had some drag drop features for like reordering items in a repeating group. You can feed them via the, the state called uh, Floppy's RAM list. And um, you can just drag and drop them around. Now in the more recent versions, uh, I added some cool new features like this, where you've always been able to um, drag items inside of a list like this, but you see that now you can also, if you want to, drag items between lists. Oops, got a little drag handle. I got to hit my drag handle on this one. He's set up with a drag handle. Um, I can just like move the items between lists. So let's see, what do I have over here? I don't have tacos over here yet, so I can put a taco in my list. So this is really cool. Um, you also note, there's a new feature uh, called placeholders. You know, a lot of times people are like, oh man, I just wish I had like a, a place in my repeating group that like kind of isn't one of the items. So the latest version of Floppy has that too. Um, talky, 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 chatty, chatty, chatty. Um, you know, one of the, the reasons that I put this feature in Floppy in the first place was that I kind of needed a kick in the butt to like start working with uh, Bubbles, you know, new responsive engine, which like isn't that new anymore, but I hadn't really, hadn't really worked with it very much. Um, and I was like, oh, well, you know, if I make a plugin that does um, drag drop stuff, then of course I'll want to support both uh, the old engine and the new engine and yada, yada, yada. Um, so I can show, I will show eventually, maybe in a different video, um, how this is how this is set up but what i wanted to do is talk a little bit um about the placeholder um and how we might use it and i'm just dragging my head around at random it's friday here people it's uh friday march 10th 2023 as i record this um you know and i'm feeling pretty good about having like fixed all these bugs because i introduced this feature with you know dragging between lists um and uh it was kind of right, but not entirely. Like it actually took a lot of work to really get it initializing right and stuff like that. And I had to uh, do a lot of a lot of scripting that I wasn't very familiar with, like mutation observers and shit. Because because the new responsive engine is very different from the old responsive engine, and the way that repeating groups kind of uh, uh, initially assemble themselves and like actually how the how the DOM structure is is completely different between old and new responsive. So it was actually quite a challenge um, to make this work. But we're looking at, you know, one of my fugly pages like I build all the time in my little demos. Um, this is built in old responsive, but we've got a new responsive one. Look at this, look at Keith, like actually working in the new responsive engine. Um, so this is a very simple page that does a really cool thing. Um, a lot of times people are like, oh, you know how in Airbnb, like they've got that, that you know the little photo editor thing and you can drag you can drag things around and right it's actually not you know I've, i hadn't been in here in a while this is my actual airbnb listing uh elrod villa palm springs check it out um it's like it's, it's not really very smooth i don't know if you can really tell in in the video but i don't think the behavior of this is like super great um it's a little clunky there's a fun little micro interaction when you edit a photo like this pops up this is you know this is something that's not i guess you could do it in bubble with the jquery stuff the jquery animations are crap i, I mean i think airbnb is probably using like sort of old crappy stuff so a lot of times people are like well how, how can i make this and they try to use um you know the bubble jquery drag plugin and it just becomes a nightmare of uh just the data management and like workflows to actually do that right. I actually built one of these like when I was kind of first getting started with Bubble and it sort of, sort of worked, but it sort of didn't. Another thing that's here is even though there's an upload photos button, there's also when you scroll down to the end, 
of your photos, there's like an add more, right? And this add more, like you can't, you know, it's clearly, it's clearly a placeholder, right? And when I click it, it, you know, pops up the file interface so I can select the file and stuff like that. Um, and people often want to do that. So it's like, okay, I want to drag drop stuff and I want to placeholder and yada yada. Well, check this out. So uh, this is my version of that. You know, I don't need to drag around my photos uh, of my vacation rental. Um, I want to drag around photos of Frank Sinatra. So I've built a uh, My Sinatra gallery where I can take any of my Sinatras and I can like drag and drop them around. And I don't, I don't know if you can tell from the video, but when you like actually visit this page, like you'll see that like, wow, this is like, this is a lot cooler and smoother than, um, than the Airbnb one. And so that's just using floppy and it's just super simple. Also, there's a placeholder here where I can upload new Sinatras. So let's upload a new Sinatra. Um, this is like about the fourth time I've done this video because like every time I do this video, I find something that I'm just not quite happy with. And then I go and change the code. So that's why there's been like a bunch of little floppy updates lately. Um, it's just, it, it, it never fails, but I think it's in a state now where I really like it. So for example, th this behaves exactly like the Airbnb one, like the, the placeholder item, you know, click to upload a Sinatra. It doesn't, it doesn't move around. It's like, it's clearly not part of the list. But it is just an element in our repeating group. We'll show how to do that. Uh, you know, so what was I doing? I was uploading a Sinatra. Let's upload a new Sinatra. Let's see. What was the Sinatra we don't have in here yet? Oh, how about Chia Pet Hair Sinatra? Okay. So we'll uh, upload. And then when I, when I click upload, I can select my file. And then it opens my Sinatra Studio. So I can give my Sinatra a name. So this is Chia Pet Hair Sinatra. And, um, hmm, I don't know what, so there's a fun fact field here. So we have to fill out a fun fact. So, um, likes to cha-cha. Okay. And then I can save my Sinatra. I did it my way. Boop. And there's, there's my new Sinatra. And, uh, now I can move him around. Now, uh, there are some other things that I haven't hooked up here yet. So like we can edit our Sinatras. Like, here's a cool band t-shirt, Sinatra. He was into Bianchi and Giangio before they were cool. That's true. But I think what I meant to say here is before, before they sold out. Before they sold out. Save my Sinatra. All right. You know, so this is just like standard bubble stuff. I can even put my head on Sinatra. And now I'm Sinatra. Um, let's show how this is set up in a second. Okay, so let's go back over to our edit mode and see how this is built. Um, so I've got a really, this is a new responsive engine. Um, so I've got a simple like column layout page, right? Where I've got my header, I've got my stupid intro header with my buttons. You should really, if you've never paid me for list shifter or paid me for my advice, you should click this button. It sends you to my page where you can send me a tip. Do that, do that right now. Um, and then I've got, I've got a section, right, with a, with a repeating group in it. And this repeating group is set up um, it, almost exactly like the tutorial that Bubble has for a full list repeating group. Um, so, you know, you go watch that. Maybe I'll go find that real quick. Yeah, it's, it's this one. How to create a full list repeating group with Bubble's new responsive editor. Great little tutorial. Not talky like mine. It's like, like a minute 30. And, um, you know, they show you how to do a full list repeating group. Like it used to be a little more obvious in the old, uh, in, in the, uh, old responsive editor. Uh, but anyway, so I've got a repeating group, right. And it's set up to, uh, display my Sinatra image. This is an image element, right? I've got, let's see, open the editor, the elements tree. I should also note, I am currently using the beta responsive engine. Um, or so it's beta responsive, beta editor, uh, that bubble just put out. It's not totally ready for prime time. There are a couple little bugs, like some things like don't show up when they're show hideable. Um, but you know, I've got my image, uh, I've got my edit icons, right. That are over here. That was kind of a neat trick getting that set up. Um, and then we've got instead of the image, like sometimes like if we're not the placeholder, we want to show the, the, the Sinatra image. Um, 
But if if the repeating group cell is the placeholder, which we'll talk about in a second, um, there's a picture uploader. And you, do, you actually can't see the picture uploader in the preview, but it's there. Uh, so that was kind of wacky. Um, I guess I switched to the editor after I originally set it up. But anyway, there's a picture uploader that appears uh, when the, the placeholder item is being shown. Um, and then there's a button to reset the list again. This one is set up so that um, uh, when it's the placeholder, it's shown. And when it's not the placeholder, it's not shown. I'll get into that logic in a second. Um, and then I've got a little debug section. You know, I'm a big fan of just like writing stuff out as text, right? In the same way that you would, you know, log a message to the console. Um, now you can do that with my plugin called Debug Buddy that's part of List Shifter. Um, you can send your own console logs and stuff. Um, but, you know, Bubble makes it really easy just to like kind of print anything as text. And so I have a little text element that that tells us what's going on in the page, okay? Now, uh, let's talk about how we get data into this. So what is what is the trick here to making our repeating group drag droppable with floppy? And like, how does that work? I think that's the most important part of what we're gonna talk about. So there's a little floppy element down here. Um, now, like all my plugins, actually, well, not all of them, but most of them, uh, have not been upgraded to have the uh, new responsive uh, fields, uh, you know, for their sizing and stuff. So, like, this guy, he's just fixed height. But um, when you have element plugins, they have to be visible on the page for their code to run. So, you'll, you know, this is a little suboptimal. Like, he's, there's a little tiny 20 pixel high or whatever uh, floppy that's sitting here. And just, you know, he's, he's acting like a spacer. I guess a lot of times people will just do throw... The, these kind of utility elements into a floating group and put it behind the page or something. Um, but anyway, that's something I'm thinking about, and I'll probably change uh, my plugins to have like more of those fields, so you have a little bit more flexibility about how they take up space on the page. Um, but anyway, so again, Floppy is, uh, and apologies if you're not new to Floppy and you've seen all my videos about this, but Floppy is a, a plugin for browser storage. Um, and you, you can use it for browser storage or not. Uh, in this case, I'm not yet using it for browser storage, but I think we'll get there. Um, what else? So um, Floppy has a type, right? And so the, the, the type of values, uh, thanks Creative Cloud, thanks, thank you. Um, the, type of, the type of values controls what values it can write to browser storage and also controls the type of two custom states, essentially that are built into floppy so one of them is called uh, floppy's ram scaler i use the the term so floppy is kind of making jokes about older data storage right uh so it's called the uh, floppy's ram scaler which is a single value of the selected type um and then there's floppy's ram list which is super powerful because there's all these actions associated with floppy's ram list that you can do that go way above and beyond um the the built-in bubble expression stuff like you can insert an item anywhere into a list using floppy's ram list um it doesn't have to be just set to the end or you know or concatenated at the beginning or you know the very limited things that you can do uh in vanilla bubble so floppy's ram list is what we're going to use to feed our repeating group okay um so in my type i have my type set to sinatra Okay, and a Sinatra is, it's, it's just a, um, it's just a data type that represents a certain Sinatra, right? Uh, it's very simple. Let's see, let's look at a Sinatra. What's a Sinatra? So a Sinatra has a field called name on it, right? This is the name of your Sinatra. It's got a fun fact, which is a really important fun fact about the given Sinatra. And then it's got a picture. And uh, the picture field is of type Sinatra picture. And a Sinatra picture is just a thing that uh, has an image on it. That's like the only custom field on it. Uh, I'm a big fan of doing this, by the way. I would almost, if you're gonna have a list of pictures, like don't put a list of native image type on something, right? Because that will cause them to get downloaded a lot, even if you're not using the, the, the image part of it. So what I like to do is I like to have a, if I have something that has a list of images on it, 
uh, or even a single image on it, what I will do is I will put that in a data type that's like a picture. And a picture could have a name. Uh, in this case, I don't need a name for it, but it does have an image. And so we'd like abstract the image away from the object a little bit, right? Okay, I don't know if that made any sense to you, but uh, it does to me. And why, why can I not, there we go. Why can I not get back to design mode? Okay, so to set floppy up, to, to, to do drag drop stuff. What we're gonna do is, um, I'm not currently using storage, so by default, there's a, there's a default scalar key name for storage and a default list key name for storage. You can just empty those out, just like delete the, the defaults, okay? And then uh, you'll notice if you've been using floppy for a while, I changed the order of some of the fields. It was really bugging me that the index DB options for database name and data store name were like all the way at the end. And so I moved them back up to, toward the top here where the list keys are, uh, just because it makes a little bit more sense for basic configuration. But then you scroll down a little bit and you'll find this section called advanced sortable RG options. That means sortable repeating group options. And all you have to do is you tell Floppy the name of the repeating group that you're going to be displaying um, uh, the Floppy's RAM list in, okay? And so you have to have HTML IDs turned on. There's documentation for this. You can just, you can read everything and it explains it. Um, but what you'll have to do, if you don't have this set up in your project, you have to go to settings and under general, we will go to, where is exposed? Expose the option to add an ID attribute to HTML elements right here, right here. Uh, we turn that on, okay? And now in your design modes, you will find that, let's find a repeating group. Here's our repeating group, Sinatra's, right? You will find that there's an HTML ID field, ID attribute. And so you set this to Sinatra, so you set this to whatever, you know, you give it like a unique name. So this is Sinatra's, right? And then I take that, that name, and over in Floppy, open Floppy, and I'll go down to the ID of the repeating group to make draggable, pop that in there. Sinatra's. So now it knows, now Floppy knows that the repeating group named Sinatra that appears in the DOM is going to be the one that's being sorted. Uh, there's a bunch of other options here. Um, you can, you can, you can do some, some basic things about like how the, uh, how the, the ghost object, that's the object that's copied that you're being moved, how that appears when it, when it's, dragged over the repeating group and stuff like that. You can even write your own CSS like this. And that's what I'm doing in this case. Uh, just customize that because you can do nifty things here. Like you do transform scale. So like when I drop my, when I drag my Sinatras around, it's very subtle, but you know, see how the aliens and see how the ghost Sinatra is bigger. So it's pretty obvious. Like that's where I'm going to drop him. Right. And then he goes back um, to his normal size when he's actually placed in the list, blah, blah, blah. Um, let's see, there's a bunch of options. Instead of moving objects around, these are for the, um, the, the drag groups. So if I wanna drag objects from one RG to another, I can just set up a drag group name. And as, as long as this name is the same as any other floppy in my page, like I'd make it like shared or something. I'll show this in my other example. Um, but you could, you could make this shared. It won't change anything in this case because I'm only, I only have one floppy on my page. But if I put another floppy on my page and made its drag group name shared as well, those floppies would be able to like drag items between each other. Um, so that's pretty cool. And there's options for like, in, it, you, can, you can make it so that you can drag an object out of a group, but, you, but it doesn't disappear. So that's what clone is about. Revert clone makes it so you basically can't resort it in the original list. We can actually prohibit adding new items uh, from a drag group. And then just like, um, you know, mostly I hate bubbles, uh, you know, no duplicates and list thing. But if you want to mimic um, bubble, uh, you know, set like behavior for lists, you can do that. You can turn that on here. Uh, and then there's this uh, field called placeholder. And placeholder is really cool. You get like three options for this. It can be off. So like if it's, if there's nothing for the placeholder, then it's what your repeating group is going to display uh, will be, um, you know, just the RAM list, right? But if you select one of the placeholders, you get access to another output that's called floppies RAM list 
plus placeholder. And what this will do is this will magically put a placeholder in in any of three conditions. So we can we can have a placeholder when the RAM list is empty because, you know, especially in the old responsive engine, a repeating group that doesn't have any items in it, it won't have any cells. And so it, it, you can't, it's not obvious like what you're supposed to do in the interface, like how would you drag an item into it? So the placeholder is like pretty important in old responsive. Um, so you can set that to when the RAM list is empty, or you can have a placeholder always at the first position in the list or always at the last position in the list. And so with my Sinatra gallery here, I've got a placeholder that's always at the last position, which is giving me this effect, right? Like there's a placeholder here at the last position and it's not really part of the list, but it's there. Okay. So I set it up as always at last. All right. So once you do that, now what you do is you can feed your repeating group with floppy's RAM list or floppy's RAM list plus placeholder. So if I go to my repeating group, you will see that my source is floppy A's and it's, we call it utility. So, so we can set, right? We could set the data source either to floppy's RAM list values, which will be just the values of the Sinatras, right? It'd be those Sinatra objects that I'm, that I'm putting in the floppy, or I can select the utility RAM list values plus placeholder. And what, what this does is it inserts either an empty item or some item that I specify. You might have noticed back in the floppy interface that there's a place for a custom placeholder. Um, but by default, what we do is we just put an empty item in there. Uh, not all lists in Bubble uh, support empty items, which is a little bit weird. So like a list of things can have empties in it and how they appear to Bubble is it's a, uh, it'll be a thing of that type, like, you know, a Sinatra. Uh, it'll be a Sinatra, but it has no unique ID. The unique, u unique ID is empty. And so that's how we can tell it apart from other things. Like the placeholder just looks like an empty thing. Um, but some types of lists do not support empty values. So I put an uh, empty number equivalent. I'm pretty sure I have a video uh, about the empties that I already did uh, with floppy. This, this will be familiar to a lot of people. Like a list of numbers can't have empty values in it. Like even though null in JavaScript is the same thing as zero basically. Um, in, in bubble, we actually have to transform if we want it like an empty value in a numeric list, we have to transform that to something else. Same thing with dates. Like there, you can't have empties in a list of dates. There's no real rhyme or reason to this. And I think it's a, a bug in a uh, published state, but whatever, uh, that's how it is. And bubble doesn't like those things. So, um, you, you know, really the application here is, is for things, but you could have strings or whatever. Um, and so, you know, if in the case of strings, the uh, placeholder item would just be the null string, it'll be empty, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, that was just a lot of subtlety, right? Anyway, so I've selected floppy A's utility RAM list values plus placeholder to be what I dis display in my repeating group. Uh, if we go down to the debug section, you'll see something interesting. So I'm writing out floppy's RAM list values. So this is the floppy A's RAM list values, each item's name, because these are Sinatra's, they're things. And so I can't, you know, a, a thing is not displayable. I have to display some field of a thing, right? So I just say floppy A's RAM list values, each item's name. So I get the names of all my Sinatra's. And then I'm also printing out floppy A's utility RAM list values plus placeholder, each item's unique ID. Um, so that you can, so that you can see uh, that there's an item there. So let's go back over here into my uh, runtime and you'll let's do a little move here. Let's move giant Afro Sinatra over here. Okay. And so you'll see it floppy's Ram list has nine values in it, right? So it's got original Sinatra, alien Sinatra, blah, 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 all the way out to giant Afro Sinatra in the list that I've dragged them. Note that if I move giant Afro Sinatra back one, like magically he just moves. So like, there's no, there's no workflows uh, required to like make, to make this work. Like the, when I move items in the repeating group, they also update in floppy's RAM list. And so then you'll see down here, I've got the RAM list plus placeholder that has 10 values in it, right? Because it's the nine Sinatras that I'm displaying plus the empty placeholder. And you can, you can sort of see it, it's here, right? Because it's at the end of the list, note how this last Sinatra that's, the, that's this guy, Chia Pet Hair Sinatra. He's number 7,900. There's a comma after this. And what's, what's in that empty space, what's in that nothing, 
is the placeholder. So that's a, it, it's a, it's a thing that has no unique ID, but it's taking up space in the repeating group. Cool, right? Okay. Now, how do we put values into Floppy's RAM list? So Floppy's RAM list is a lot like a, a custom state and you have to execute actions to change the values in it. Floppy's RAM list only changes uh, under your command, right? You have to like put something into it. The, the only way it populates automatically is there is one option and that is if you're using browser storage and you want to automatically retrieve the values that are in storage and put them into the RAM list and the RAM scaler, you can do that here by setting this to yes, auto set RAM. So what auto set RAM will do is when floppy initializes, it'll look for the keys that it's writing. And if the keys are there, it'll pull those values and automatic, not just put them into the, the storage outputs of floppy, but it'll put them in the RAM list so that you can like mess around with them a bit more. So that's, that's, that's the only way that like floppy's RAM list will ever become populated without you saying that it should do that. Okay, we'll change that back to no. Okay, let's go and see how we fill the RAM list with our Sinatras, shall we? Okay, so I'm gonna go over to my workflows and show you how this is all set up uh, and how we populate values into the RAM list. So this is very important. Listen to me now or hear me later or hear me now and listen to me later, however you say that. Um, this is super important. When you're in the world of like element plugins, a properly built element plugin will have like an event that tells you whether it's been initialized or updated in some way, right? This is because the, the code for element plugins needs time to do its magic, right? So you might be used to um, doing things like, you know, using the pages loaded event what is, where is that? Where is the pages? Lo I never use the pages loaded event pretty much. Well, I guess I do. Um, you know, there's this event called pages loaded. You can't throw actions at a plugin element at this stage generally, right? You have to wait until they're initialized. So we have an event called floppies initialized, right? And so we just, we do it like this. We add an event under elements. We'll see a floppy initialized that's what that's what this that's what this event is okay a flop when a floppy is initialized that means that floppy has done all of its setup stuff it's if you have like auto store ram setup whatever it's read the values back and it's like ready to go and it's ready to accept actions okay so when floppy is initialized what i do is i set its ram list value so this is another event you would find it like this set ram there we go. We can set a RAM scalar value or set the RAM list values, right? So what I'm doing is I'm setting the RAM list for floppy to just a very simple thing. I'm doing search for Sinatras, right? I showed you what Sinatras were earlier. We're just going to go get the list of Sinatras from our database and we will sort them by created date, descending no. Um, so they're like oldest to newest, right? And so that becomes the initial state of the RAM list. And then, right, once that's done, this publishes the values of the RAM list to floppy's RAM list and also floppy's RAM list plus placeholder outputs if we have the placeholder option enabled, right? So that's how I'm getting my Sinatras. And so when we refresh this page, what we're doing is this will resort. I don't know if we changed the order here much, did we? I guess we maybe changed giant Afro Sinatra and Chia Pet Sinatra, I don't know. But once this page loads, and keep in mind, this takes a long time to load just because I'm in like dev mode, like nothing's cached, yada, yada, yada. In actual practice, you would find this a lot faster in, in your production app, right? So here we go. So here's my Sinatra. So see, you'll see when the page loaded, it popped in the list of Sinatras, but they're coming from Floppy's RAM list. And we didn't set those at page load. We set them when Floppy is initialized. And there's, there's my Sinatras, right? Okay. Um, you know, like basically like that's it. Like just doing that gave us this boop, boop, boop. Now we're not really, we're not doing anything with this reordered list. It's really just cosmetic at this point. Right? Like, so it's like, okay, Keith, well, you know, that's, that's neat that I can, I can do all this shit, but, um, 
you know, like what, what's the point in that? Well, let's just do a couple things. Let's like build this out a little bit more. Um, you know, I've got this set up where I can, I can do my, my file uploading. I guess I should show how that works maybe, right? Click to upload a Sinatra. So when I click to upload Sinatra, that's just this action. When picture uploaders click to upload a Sinatra's value is changed, right? So that's just when the picture uploader's value is changed. I, what I do first is I create a new Sinatra picture, right? I showed you the Sinatra picture data type before. Um, and then it has an image field on it. We set that image to be this picture uploader's value, which is the image we just uploaded, right? Now that we've created a Sinatra picture, we could create a new Sinatra. So we create a new Sinatra, and then in its picture field, we attach the result of step one, the new picture we just created, right? And then I want to display my Sinatra Studio. Let's, let's go look at the Sinatra Studio really quick. Sinatra Studio is just a floating group. Sorry, it's a pop-up, not a floating group. It's a pop-up. The hell are you talking about? Uh, it's just a little pop-up, right? And it shows us the image. It's got a cute little header up here. And I've got two inputs in here to like uh, set the Sinatra's name and set a fun fact about it. And then I've got save and cancel buttons, right? All right, let's make it go away. Go away, Sinatra Studio. Okay, back to my workflows. Here we go. So what I'm going to do to to put this value, right, to put this new Sinatra into my Sinatra Studio, what I do is I do display data, right? So the display data action, like you're probably familiar with this, but if you're not familiar with the display data action, display data is it's basically like set the value of a state, right? It's really the same thing. So groups, including pop-ups, like have a data type. And uh, that's essentially like a, a state, like Flappy's RAM list or some custom state that I've uh, created in my page. Um, but instead of this action being called like set data or, or send data, it's called display data. But literally what it does is it takes whatever data object, you know, like of whatever type I have, and it sends that as the data to display, right? So having created my new Sinatra, uh, first I created the picture, I took the picture and attached it to the Sinatra. Now I send the Sinatra into the pop-up Sinatra Studio. And then the next step I have to do is show the pop-up, right? And so that'll pop up with my new Sinatra in it, or I can customize his name and his fun fact. And then what I'm going to do is because the RAM list only changes when I tell it to, what we do is we will add this new Sinatra to the RAM list. So there's an action called add RAM list values of floppy. And you can do a lot of different things here. Um, we can add a single value, we can add a list of values, and we can even control like what position they're at. But all I really want to do here is I just want to take the new Sinatra and put him at the end of the RAM list so he shows up in my repeating group, right? So I'm just going to do add single value, and then that's, and what value do I want to add? The result is step two, the new Sinatra I just created, okay? And then just to clean up the, um, the, the picture uploader, uh, I reset relevant inputs, which all that causes it to do is like clear out the the little thumbnail image that it puts in there, right? You're you're familiar with this. You you know all this shit. All right. Uh, so that's what happens when we create a Sinatra. Let's just demonstrate it again. We'll click to upload it as Sinatra. Um, you're probably wondering like why I have all these weird pictures of Frank Sinatra. It's because well, one, I like even though AI is like completely stupid, I do I do love Dolly too. Uh, and uh, uh, diffusion and all that shit. Uh, and so I thought this would be like a really fun example. And so one night I just sat around like making Frank Sinatra's using in painting. So, you know, there's this is like an album cover or something originally. And so I just, you know, erased Frank's face and then like, you know, used in painting to like, you know, make him Skeletor. Uh, or this is a good one. This is Grumpy Cat Sinatra. So let's do Grumpy Cat Sinatra. I'll upload them. You know, I could make this interaction a little nicer, right? Like while it's uploading, I could have like, I, I could have like, you know, thrown up a little spinner or something. We could do that. So this is Grumpy Cat Sinatra. And oops, Sinatra. Hmm. What's a fun fact about Grumpy Cat Sinatra? <laughs> he thinks you suck. He thinks you suck. Save my Sinatra. I did it my way. All right. Oh, see, and there he is. So see, we added him to the end of Floppy's RAM list so that he shows up there when we're done in our Sinatra studio. Cool, cool beans. And then you'll see, of course, Grumpy Cat Sinatra appeared here because I'm just printing out 
the, the list. Um, now, there's also, there's some little icons I created here, right, that allow me to edit. Look, this is a lot like, uh, right, in Airbnb, they have a little drop-down menu. I don't think that's as sexy as having icons. So I've got icons. I just, I, I did it my way. Um, we do have a delete button. Uh, when I will point you to the URL for this so that you can see this project, but you can only delete stuff if you're the administrator. Like I can't, I'm logged in as the administrator, so I could delete this Sinatra, um, but you won't be able to, but that's why I did a remove button to it. We'll, we'll set up a remove button. So I haven't really finished this feature yet. So I deleted my Sinatra, which deleted it from a database, but that made this item empty in Floppy's RAM list. So now it looks like, it looks like the placeholder, right? Because if the value is empty currently, this is how I've got the placeholder set up, um, we're gonna format the, the cell to look like a picture uploader. So that's not, so we didn't really finish this feature yet. So when I delete a Sinatra or a Sinatra goes away, then what I need to do is I need to remove it from Floppy's RAM list. So let's do that. Let's go here, let's see. What happens when my delete button is clicked? So here's my little delete icon. It's a trash can, right? We'll go over to my workflows. What do we do? So when icon delete is clicked, first we delete the uploaded file. That was the Sinatra's pictures image, right? That makes sense. Get, throw the image away. We're gonna delete the Sinatra picture that contained that image, right? That makes sense. Group Sinatra cards, Sinatra's picture. Uh, and then we delete the Sinatra itself. The last thing we need to do is we need to remove RAM list values a floppy. So we need to remove that Sinatra from the RAM list, right? Now the problem here is that Sinatra doesn't exist anymore, does he? So I can't reference him by value. I'd have to reference him by index. So I guess what I should do is I should probably need to move this. I could move this to the start of the workflow, right? So let's take, let's, before we delete all the shit about that Sinatra, let's remove him from the RAM list. So we can, uh, re we can remove him by index, okay? We can remove a single value by index, or we can remove a single value by, uh, by its value itself. So that's bubble style. Right when you you remove an item from a list by saying, "Well, remove this thing," like remove Grumpy Cat Sinatra, like I like I just did. But we could remove the Sinatra that's at this index. Um, so that would just be current cells index. That'd be one way to do it. Let's just make sure that works, shall we? Oh, and now we have to refresh this page. But I just want to go through all the different ways that you might do this. Do do do. We're reloading. We are reloading our page. Reloading our page in Bottle Defmo is fun. It's fun. I'm going to drag my head around to entertain you for a while. Hey, there we go. Um, Let's see. I got, oh, now I'm going to have to delete a Sinatra. I like all these Sinatras, though. Okay, I'll delete you. Hey, look at that. He deleted the right way. So what happened there is I removed him from the RAM list and then I deleted him from the database and then we didn't have that ugly extra placeholder standing around. So that's cool. That's one way I could, I could do that. Now the other way I could do that is there, I guess there is still an index here, right? Whoops. Oh no. Don't delete that. There we go. So, I mean, there still will be an item here. It'll just be an empty. So I could also have this at the end of the list, I guess. Why was I being dramatic? Well, there was something else I wanted to demonstrate that maybe I just didn't demonstrate at this point. Uh, let's just see how that looks because we might actually see that empty item flash in for a minute. So this is probably not as good as the other way. Like that really should really be the first workflow step. Do, 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 do. Big head, little head. Big head, little head. Okay. Um, let's just see. Oh, I have to delete another Sinatra to test this. Okay, we'll delete Giant Afro Sinatra. Oh, that wasn't as good of an interaction, right? Because it takes time for him to vanish. See, like setting the, like removing him from the RAM list is a lot faster than removing him from the database. So, okay, definitely, definitely want to put that first, right? I mean, 
you know, why, why make people have to wait? So that's cool. That's a cool interaction. Um, what I was going to say actually earlier is that when you're deleting by an index, uh, consider something a little wacky. Like, let's say that if you're using the placeholder, this is something you have to accommodate, right? So consider if I changed the placeholder to be always at first instead of always at last, my indexes are going to be kind of screwed up, right? Because there's always this extra item in front. Let's just, let me just show you that. Oh man, we're going to delete more Sinatras. All my beautiful Sinatras gone. All right. Um, let's go down here. Well, let's make our placeholder always at first. And let's see what happens. So that's going to take the, the placeholder and it's going to put it at the front of the list, right? And once this reloads, what's going to happen is so, so that, that placeholder, right? It's going to be here at position one in my placeholder list. Um, but, we, but that's not the index in the RAM list, is it? Because the RAM list, original Sinatra is the first value in the RAM list. See that? Original Sinatra is the first value in the RAM list. But there's an empty at the first value in the, place, in the RAM list plus placeholder. So what that means is that if I delete, oh, I guess we'll delete exploding TV head Sinatra. Like, let's watch what happens here. I'm trying to delete exploding TV head Sinatra, but somebody else is going to disappear instead because the indexes are different. Boop. Yeah, it didn't delete exploding TV head Sinatra. It deleted the other one. And then I've got it empty and, ah, what's going on? Well, this is really simple to fix, okay? And I don't even make you... Um, have to do uh, any math here. You don't have to subtract one. That's basically what we need to do. We have to subtract one in this case. What we do instead, there's, a, there's an extra um, state in floppy that contains this. So instead of saying remove by index current cells index, what I'll do is I'll make it current cells index plus, plus, you have to click it, plus, and then floppies, Floppy A's, it's, which value is it? It's placeholder. Here we go. Utility, placeholder index adjust. So placeholder index adjust like is always updated. Like even if you changed uh, your placeholder mode, this is only relevant basically in the case of the always at first. But if I added some you know new kind of feature, this would still be here. So anyway, if I change this to be uh, the index plus the placeholder index adjustment, then indexes will work just right. Let's check that out. Is that clear to you what I'm going on about there? See, the indexes are different. The, the repeating groups indexes are different than the indexes in floppy's RAM list. And so we have to accommodate that somehow. Now that's only true when the placeholder is at the first position. If the placeholder is at the last position, like we don't care because drag and drop wise, we can't, we can't access that. Also, we can't set the placeholder list. We can only set floppy's RAM list. So it, it's not an issue. So the, the value of uh, the, the placeholder index adjustment will actually always be zero unless you're using the always at first placeholder mode. It's that, it's that simple. I'm running out of Sinatras now. I guess we'll delete, well, we'll delete cool band t-shirt Sinatra. And so now if I click this index, is it right? Remember what we did here, we just added, we added the placeholder index adjustment to our current cells index. These should go away. Yes, success. So anyway, that's the placeholder index adjust. Um, and now I just, now I'm out, gosh, I, ooh. We should, let's add some sexy Sinatras. Let's just do that. I don't know. I like this one. Sinatra floating in a tiki mug. He's not really floating in the tiki mug. So this is, this is a uh, Luau, Luau Sinatra, Luau Sinatra. He wants to hula with you. Save my Sinatra. I love how it put like a little bit of like album text in there. Do you notice that? It's like, it looks like it's like a album. It's funny. Uh, let's add another Sinatra. Oh, I just saw the, oh, this is a, this is a weird one. 
This is Rat Sinatra. Rat Face Sinatra. Rat Face Sinatra. Rummaging in your garbage. Save my Sinatra. Oh, there we go. Now we can drag these guys around. Yeah, I like I like Luau Sinatra almost as much as original Sinatra because they both have cocktails. I do too. Mm. All right, enough messing around with that. Well, I kind of feel like we need another Sinatra. Oh, there's some Sinatra in a kimono. What other Sinatra? Oh, gas mask Sinatra. Kind of like some of these scary looking ones too. And here we go. Supermodel Sinatra. Yeah. Dolly 2 doesn't really understand how boobs work, does it? Supermodel Sinatra. Won't take Kanye for an answer. Saved by Sinatra. <laughs> so cursed. <laughs> All right. Um, okay, what next? Okay, so uh, what I was doing there is I, I was uh, demonstrating removing a Sinatra from the RAM list uh, by its index. But, of course, um, things are unique, right? So there's never really, until we delete an object like we're just showing and it went null, um, you know, there, there's not going to be the same two Sinatras in my list, like ever, right? So I didn't really need to remove them by index. What I could do instead is is remove them by value. So I'll remove the single value, the um, parent groups Sinatra in this case, right? So that would be like the, the actual way that I would probably do this. Okay, now having done that, I had just told you that of course you won't be able to delete a Sinatra, but you should be able to remove a Sinatra from your list, right? So let's just set that up, right? I've got this remove icon that you will have access to. And so we'll just start at workflow on that. So like, you know, when icon remove is clicked, what we'll do is we'll just do the same thing, right? I guess what we could do is like, how could we do this easier? Let's see, let's get rid of that. Because we want to do the same thing as icon delete, right? So let's just like copy this and paste it. Copy, paste. Okay, when icon delete is clicked, then we could just replace this. Button. Oh, was it clicked? What is it? Is it an element clicked? Maybe I didn't want to do that. When clicked? Why is it clicking on in here? Oh, there it is. An element clicked. And then I can select the element. Oh, yeah. I see. There's delete. I'm just faffing around. Sorry. <laughs> Icon, where's, where's my icon? Icon remove. There it is. I thought I'd give him a nicer name. So I just, you know, I just cloned that, that event and I just put the same, the same actions on it. So we'll say icon remove. When icon remove is clicked, we'll just do this, the same damn thing, except that we won't delete the updated stuff. Why did I even like clone that workflow? I wasn't thinking ahead, was I? Because all I want to do is remove it from the RAM list. I'm not going to delete it for you, right? I guess. Hmm. Or actually, I should actually restore that. Because you might have uploaded your own Sinatra. And now you're deleting it and I want to delete it. Yeah. Okay. Whatever. Oh, it's Friday. I love it. Okay. So let's see. Can we now remove Sinatras without deleting them? Oh wait, no, I didn't want remove. I don't want remove to be delete. I do, actually, I literally want it so you can make a gallery. I forgot where I was going with this demo. We'll just remove the Sinatra from the RAM list, but we won't, we won't delete it. Um, let's see here. Let's actually make it so that you could delete your Sinatra. So let's see, delete an uploaded file uh, only when so I have this, I was kind of misthinking this. So I was like, okay, you've got to be an administrator. Um, I could show that. I should show this sometime, like how I do administrators, but um, that, that's not really the subject of this, of this tutorial. Uh, I guess what I want to do is, um, oh, only when not? Only when? Oh, 
I now I'm just faffing around. Um, I want to make it so that you can delete it if it's yours. Oh, so okay, right. So when you're the creator. But see, some of my Sinatras I create. Oh, never mind. Here we go. Only when clear expression. This Sinatra. Only when parent group Sinatra's creator is you. Creator. Creator is current user. Fine. I'll probably change that later. Oops. Wait, why can't I do that? Is. Huh? Why isn't current user showing up? Only when current user is. Current group Sinatra's creator? Hey, wait, what's going on? Oh, there's creator. Jeez. Not so hard. Boop, ba doop, boop, doop. All right, so fine. I mean, this is just a dev project, right? So it's not, uh, like, it's not really set up for, like, users. You can, you can sign up. You could sign up if you want to, I guess. It's fine. Whatever. You can sign up. You can upload donkey porn to my dev thing if you want. Um, let's see. Let's also put the let's put the placeholder back at last. That's really bugging me. Let's see. That's the icon. I need floppy. Hi, floppy. Let's do placeholder at last. Always at last. Okay. Anyway. Let's see, so do we have remove functionality now? I actually, I don't care if my Sinatras go away, it's okay. I can just, I can rebuild them. It's fine, it's fine. Let's see, so we'll remove Alien Sinatra. Boop, gone. But it probably deleted too, right? Like if I re reset my list. Oh, he's back. Oh, good. He didn't He didn't delete. I must have created him when I was not logged in. That's good. Anyway, I need to mark these guys as like being system resources so they, they can't like go away, right? Um, okay. So, all right. Let's see. We just clicked that reset list button. I guess we could look at that. You know what I'm going to do here. I'm just going to do the same thing I did when Floppy was initialized, right? So if I click reset list, I'm just going to put that my original list, search for Sinatra's, right, sorted by created date. I'm just going to put that back in Floppy's RAM list. So, you know, so like if I move these all around, you know, move my supermodel, Skeletor, Luau, right, and then if I remove Luau, if I reset, it goes back to the original order of the search. Okay, cool. I mean, I guess I'll talk about this because, um, you know, the edit feature here, because like, I'm so tired of like, uh, why does every new bubbler like ask this question? Like, how can I take the item that the user has selected and edit it? Like, this couldn't be easier, right? It's the same thing that I did, uh, you know, when we create a new Sinatra, right? So when the picture uploader changes, right, we created a new Sinatra. Right, sorry, we created the image, the Sinatra that goes with it, and then we displayed the Sinatra in the, the studio. Well, that's all we do. So the, when icon edit is clicked, we display data in pop-up Sinatra studio. The data to display is the parent group Sinatra, because uh, this, this is in a, the cell in a repeating group, and then we show the pop-up, right? And then our pop-up is visible and our pop-up has a couple of buttons. And so, you know, it's got one that's called Save Sinatra. So when I click Save Sinatra, we make changes to that Sinatra that's in the pop-up, pop-up Sinatra Studios Sinatra. We can, we change its name to the, the new editor value, or the new input value, and we change the fun fact to the new fun fact input value, right? And then we can hide the studio and then to keep it from when it pops up again, from showing the old Sinatra for a second, we just reset data. Okay, like it's just, it's that simple. Like not, none of this is hard. Uh, and then there's a cancel button, right? So there's cancel in pop-up studio. Uh, when cancel is clicked, we hide 
the studio without doing anything. Hide it and reset it, right? There's also, there's a cute micro interaction that I might not have moused over yet. I mean, you could, you know, you could get fancier with these things. Oops. Oh, man, wrong one. What happened? Preview. I'm getting confused about my windows. Because we just want to show the cancel thing. We're coming up on an hour. So I'm probably going to, like, close down this tutorial momentarily. There we go. Okay. Uh, so, see, edit. So uh, what I do is I just take this Sinatra and throw him in the studio. All right, cool. Uh, cancel. Nobody cancels Sinatra. That's clever. All right. Um, let me go think for a minute and see if there's anything else I want to talk about. I think this kind of gives you the basics of like how you could make a, um, a sortable gallery. And, you know, the, the next thing you'd want to do, right, is we'd want to like save this gallery. I guess we'll do that in a minute. But let's see if I can do that really fast without talking and like spazzing out. Yeah, let's do that. Let's make it so that you can save this. We'll put a new option down here in the placeholder that's like save as gallery or something. Um, let's do that. So let's go back over to edit mode. I'm going to take this button and I'm going to clone him. We'll copy paste. Oop. He went to kind of a weird position. Doop. Doop, doop, doop. Layout, layout. Move him previous. Yep, next. Why? Why why are you there? Don't don't do that. I'm just gonna Okay, let's what what is going on here? Group Sinatra card. Copy. Paste. Why is he not where I want? There, there. That's where I want you to be. Reset list. You're not reset list anymore. Now you're going to be somebody else. You're going to be create save as gallery. Save as gallery. Okay. Start edit workflow. Now we don't have a gallery data type, do we? No, we don't. So when save as gallery is clicked, let's see. Let me make this guy blue. So he matches the reset list, right? When save as gallery is clicked, what we will do is create a new thing. We'll create a new thing. And this new thing will be of type, create a new type. We'll make a Sinatra gallery. Now I'm just putting Sinatra in front of everything so that I can tell like what demo these are a part of, you know, near on app, like it might just be a gallery, right? Um, so let's see, new types, not the gallery. All right. And so it's going to have a field, right? What's it going to have a field of? It's going to have a field of Sinatra images. I, actually, I'll call them Sinatra pictures. And this is something I like to do when I'm naming things that are lists, right? I put the word list on them. Like it, it, it pains me to no end when I see these chuckleheads uh, in the forum who have like named all of their things plurals so that, you know, like in the expression builder, it's like, you, you've got like a plural apostrophe S all over the place. It's like, come on, you chuckleheads. It's like, things are singular, right? Then fields should be singular. If a field is a list, just, you could put like list on the end of it. Cause it's a singular list. So you, so this would be like Sinatra pictures list pick the uh, Sinatra pictures or whatever, right? So the field type here is going to be Sinatra pictures. All right. And it's a list of Sinatra pictures. See, a Sinatra pictures list is a list of Sinatra pictures. That makes a lot of sense, right? Okay. So we'll create a new Sinatra gallery. And then the Sinatra's pictures list will be, we'll set the list to floppy A's RAM list, right? Which is where my list of pictures is. Floppy A's RAM list values. Boop. Is that right? Oh, it's not the, it's not the Sinatra. Oh, actually, oh, I did this wrong. We're going to delete that because I, I want it to be a list of Sinatras, right? I don't want to save a list of Sinatra pictures. I want to save a list of Sinatras. The fuck? Get it together, Crosley. All right, let's go with Sinatra Galley. I'm going to delete this field. 
At least it's not your pictures. Trash that field. All right. Okay. See, I should have gone here in the first place. Sinatras. This we could call Sinatras. I'll do Sinatra list. So it's the gallery's list of Sinatras, right? So we're going to save the Sinatras there. Now, this is the same thing uh, like uh, as, as saving the Sinatra pictures because they're just things. So when you do this kind of thing, it, this sort of activity, I shouldn't use the word thing so close together, when, when you're storing a list of things, what you're storing in the database is really just the unique IDs, essentially, of those things. So it's, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter what they are. Like, there, there's not, like, storing the Sinatras is no different from storing a Sinatra picture. Um, so, you know, this is just better. So we're going to save the list of Sinatras. All right. Go back to my workflow. Create a new Sinatra gallery. Uh, now this is all boogered up because that doesn't exist anymore. So we'll set the Sinatra list to be set list. Floppy A's. Floppy A's. Ram list values. There we go. And that should be my list of Sinatras. Yes. Okay. Um, now, how would you ever get back to your Sinatras that you saved in the lovely gallery? Well, I guess we could, we could do a drop down or something. See, now we're getting ugly. Now, now we're going to be just like... It's kind of fugly. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. I want to give you the chance to give it a name, don't I? Do, do, do. See, I'm just like farting around. I'm just farting around now. Save as gallery. So it needs a name. This gallery needs a name. So what we're going to do, we're actually going to do a pop-up. That's what I meant to do. Whatever. Oh, boy. Create a new field. This is going to be called name. So we'll name our gallery. The field type is text. Create. Set the name to something. Well, we haven't set it yet. So what we're going to do, let's let's make us a little pop-up. Bum ba dum bum bum. I'm over an hour now. Oh no. Let's see. Did I to make another easier pop-up? No, I guess I didn't. I guess I'll make a new pop-up. I'm gonna start with my Sinatra Studio. We'll clone this. Let's do <laughs> Copy. And then we'll do paste. Oh, I want to paste it in the page, don't I? Paste. There we go. This is save your gallery. Save your Sinatras. Save your Sinatra gallery. And it's, let's see, I don't need the pictures, I just need. And so this will be edit gallery name, right? Won't have initial content. This will be name this gallery. Name this gallery. Name this gallery. We won't have a fun fact. Delete that. Save gallery. Do 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 do. If I were really nice and I felt like like uh I could do it quickly, like you know, I could put like a a miniature version of the gallery in here. You know, like I could insert a repeating group in here that like shows your the little tiny thumbnails of your Sinatras. But whatever, I'm not going to do that. Uh, okay, and then let's see. Cancel, save. Let's see. So when cancel, all right. We'll need one for cancel. We'll need one for save. Save gallery. Mm -hmm. All right. So when save is gallery clicked, what we're going to do? We are going to display. Oh, come on. Why is this giving me fits? We're going to display, show. Actually, we don't need to display anything. We'll show an element. We will show the pop-up. It's not just, oh man, change its name. Change its name. This is pop-up, save gallery. 
All right. Boop -a -doop. Show an element, pop up, save gallery. All right, so we'll do that first. Move, move. There we go. Pop up, save, get show, pop up, save gallery. And then, okay, we'll do, oops, delete that. I, why am I'm doing everything backward? I'm doing everything backward, right? Where's my save Sinatra? Oh, change the name of your goddamn buttons. Save Sinatra gallery. Cancel gallery. Button cancel gallery. There. Okay, this will be a little bit easier to understand now, won't it? So when save Sinatra gallery is clicked, let's see, we'll make you green. When save Sinatra gallery is clicked, we will make a new thing. Create a new thing. Create a new thing. It's going to be called a guy. It's going to be a Sinatra gallery. Create a Sinatra gallery, right? Let's see, what fields do I have? Ah, the name will be input. Oh, come on. Button. Wait a minute. Where's my input? Hey. Hey. Let's see. Where's, where's my input? What did I change the name of the input to? It's this one. Edit gallery name. Okay. Jeez Louise. Why can I not remember anything? Edit gallery name. Edit. Gallery. There we go. Edit gallery names value. Jesus Christ. Uh, let's see. And then the Sinatra list will be set list. Floppy A's. Oops. Floppy A's. Ram list values. Okay. There we go. That will create a new gallery for us. And then let's see. How do I want to show them to you? Uh, pop up, pop up, pop up. Where is this pop up? Pop up, save gallery. Go away. All right. Let's see. Um, I mean, I guess that would be like a little drop down or something, right? Uh, let's see. Insert. Insert. Do I want to make a new? Do I need a new group? I guess I do. All right. Let's. See. Make a group. Put it down here, but we're going to move it. Let's see. Layout. Oh, it's group K. If this, we want it max width. Do, 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 do. Container layout. Let's see. I want a column, I guess. Do, 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 do not fixed width, fit width to content, no, whatever, that's fine, let's put a drop down in here, I mean, you can see, right, like why I uh, select a gallery, drop down, select gallery, you can see why I set all this up, select gallery, and what's this going to be? This will be select gallery. Yeah, choices. Go away, Intel. Places sorts. We'll do current users. Oh no, we'll do a search for galleries. Search for Sinatra galleries created by current user, right? galleries created by so only you can see your galleries current user you know I might I might make this a little more friendly right and like there could be a, a list of system galleries right that are gonna be in here I just haven't built them yet right it's good this is a fun little project um, and I'll add more stuff to it I don't know sort by name descending no all right so gallery is created by the user. Uh, let's see. And then we need to move this little group around, I guess. So this group needs to go up, 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 up. I mean, look, she's not pretty, okay? Let's see. Fit height to content? 
Uh, let's see. Minimum height. Ten. There we go. Put a margin on this. Ten. Okay. So I now I have an ugly ass drop down, right? Oh, what's my issue? Fill out the option caption. Oh yeah. Insert dynamic data. Current options name. Uh, yeah, I think so. Okay. Can I now create a gallery? Let's see. I don't know. Okay, an hour and 10 minutes. Oh, man. I got to get done with this. Also, I wasn't really talking much there, but you, you know what I was doing. Do, 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 do. Waiting for my page to load in dev mode. In dev mode. Yeah. Do you like my shirt? He's like Gamera. You see him? All right. Hey, all right. So I have no galleries. That's cool. Um, you know, I would change that. I would change that to be like a mean message. If you don't have any galleries, I'd be like, you're a loser and you have no galleries. All right. So let's like make a custom gallery. Let's upload some more Sinatras. Let's see. Let's do, what do we want? Oh, Mohawk Sinatra. Do, 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 do. Mohawk Sinatra. Mohawk Sinatra. Hmm. He rides a scooter. Save my Sinatra. Okay, and let's do another one. Let's do... Oh, there's some really disturbing ones, aren't there? Pretty disturbing. Pretty disturbing. This goth girl Sinatra. I like her. Do, 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 do. Goth girl Sinatra. Wants to cut you. All right. Save that Sinatra. Okay, so let's take my, I'm going to take my cool, like, post-apocalyptic Sinatras. Let's see, let's put them up here, kind of. Who else is cool? Oh, I want Skeletor Sinatra. Okay, and then I'm just going to remove everybody else. Ooh, but what does my remove do again? Does my remove delete? I don't really want that if it, if it deletes. See, I keep changing my mind. What's the remove? Remove, where are you? There we go. Icon remove. Oh, yeah, it just takes them out of the RAM list. Perfect. That's what we want, right? Okay. So let's see. I will get rid of all my other Sinatras. Do, 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 do. Okay. And so, oh, yeah, we'll keep Ratface Sinatra in there. And so let's save his gallery. Name this gallery Post Apocalyptic Lyptic Sinatras. Save gallery. Boop. Oh, I didn't like uh, make the pop up go away. Uh, did I? Hey, but look, there's my post apocalyptic Sinatras. And of course, you know, now I could set it up so that, like, if I select this, it like retrieves them. Because, of course, it doesn't yet. Anyway, whatever. You, you get the idea. We're playing around. Probably by the time that uh, I actually give you the link for this, uh, I'll have, like, this will be more spiffy. Because it's just fun. It's fun to just kind of make stupid projects sometimes. You know, you, you just. Keeps your skills sharp, right? Anyway, um, that's how to make a, a drag droppable image gallery um, using Floppy. Really, really cool, right? Really, really cool. Really, really easy. We didn't do anything that's not like basic bubble shit. Um, it's Friday, so I might be done for the day. Um, have fun. Keep bubbling on. I uh, hope you stay well, and uh, we'll talk to you later. Peace out.